Hey everyone, I'd like to chat with you today about some of the things we could do to make a good communications experience in regards to our environment lighting. There are several ways to light ourselves and make sure our camera is picking up the light we want and not picking up the light we don't want. Making use of available natural light and our workstation position or using a small lighting rig will help our camera pick up our faces, actions, and gestures in the most discernible way possible. If you're using a virtual background, it will assist in helping our software distinguish between you and your natural background and help the computer track your key image. The lighting in your environment is one of the easiest things to control and one of the least expensive and non-time consuming things to upgrade. Now, let's get on with the tips and tricks. Okay, first thing we need to think about is our room and where the natural light is coming from. If we have too much light behind us, that light can have a negative impact on how our image is picked up by our camera. Too much backlight will make us look like a silhouette and cut all of the detail out of our image. If we have to have natural light at our back, close the curtains or shades, or if that doesn't block enough light, put something in front of that window. We do need a little backlight so we don't look like a two-dimensional image, but not too much as it will wash out our camera. Sometimes, the best way to control the light is to be in a room that has no ambient light and put up the exact lighting that we want. A ring type light can help out dramatically. And there are several sizes and models available online at an electronic stores that will fit into our need and into our budget. Even a small light or lamp that you would purchase at a hardware store can help out if it is placed in the correct position. If you wanted to invest in more expensive lights and have a dedicated setup, make sure you have at least the basics for a good three-point lighting environment. Key light, this should be on your face and will be the main light. Fill light, the light that fills in where the shadows that are created by the key light are. And a backlight, higher up and shining on your back to make you look like you have some depth and dimension. If you do decide to invest money and time into your lighting setup, Make sure you take a look at Avix's three-point lighting video. I'll put the link below. Some skin tones require more indirect or diffuse light. Depending on your skin color, tone, or quality, you might find direct light a little too harsh. Some ring lights or other portable lights have diffusers built into the light housing. If you don't have a diffuser or a light with a diffuser, you can always try different types of materials that will diffuse your light. Just make sure the material you use can take the heat generated by the light or put it far away from the bulb that it won't get that heat transfer. When selecting the room for your video conference or chat, ensure the room has a lighter color paint as this will help give your controlled light the best chances of diffusing and creating a spatial feeling in your background. You also want to ensure that your camera is not looking out a window or directly into a light source. Most people set their home workspace up to have their back to a window. They find the window distracting or don't want to stare into the bright sunlight all day. This is great for your eyes, but really bad for capturing images on your camera. If you do have your back to a window, make sure you pull the shades down or close the curtains before your video call. If you are still having problems with your backlight, try putting more light on your face. If you have an especially dark environment, this might generate a lot of video noise in your background. For the best video conferencing or video chatting experience, your light should be balanced between your key image and your background. Many platforms now include the option of using a virtual background. Using a virtual background can help your video feed look more polished, professional, and less distracting. But you need to make sure your environment gives the software the best possible chance of tracking you and eliminating your natural background. Having good three-point lighting also helps your software in tracking your natural background. With good lighting on your face and shoulders, the software can much faster and more accurately track what is you and what is the room. Small green screens behind you go a long way in assisting with your virtual background and many software platforms have a green screen option in their settings. Lighting your shot properly is just another small detail that makes a huge difference to your far end video participants. With a little forethought, a little knowledge, and a couple of lights, 
you could greatly enhance the experience of your video chatting and communications with your coworkers in many different situations. Working with your environment and a few small investments will have huge benefits down the road. Using things like desk lamps, copy paper, and blankets can solve some of our issues when trying to control our lighting. You don't have to break the bank in order to have a good experience. You just have to be creative and know what you're looking at and what you want your far end to see.